So in the previous video, uh, we started to develop our layout. We started to move around our items of furniture. We put in our flow. And it's worth saying that the flow is approximately 0.8 of a metre. And that's for a clear corridor wall to wall. It can be slightly less if it's around the likes of a coffee table or a low item of furniture. Equally, it can be slightly more if it's in a kitchen area. And this is to accommodate the undercounter units and that they might open out or you might have drawers that open out. Equally, there may be two people working in this kitchen, so you want to give them enough space so that they can pass each other comfortably. And you can develop that as your layout develops. So again, at the moment, it doesn't have to be an exact science. So today, what I want to do is show you how to pull up an elevation from your plan. Now this is very useful to um, see what your elevations look like as you develop your plan. Particularly if you're doing it scale 1 is to 50 because um, you can fit it all on one page and you can see the whole thing. Now, so here's one I did earlier. But I'm going to bring you through the steps of this so you can see how I did it. Now, it's useful to know what height your windows are and how the stairs maybe relates to that couch because it looks like uh, this could be a tight space if somebody's passing through here. So for the purposes of that, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how I pulled up that elevation and this elevation as well. Now, first of all, you want to establish, I suppose, where you're looking at the elevation from. So you would put in a section line. I'm going to put my section line here and I'm going to put the arrows facing in this direction because this is how I'm looking at it. And for this one, I'm going to put my section line in here. So that's about communication and that's about showing the person who's looking at your plans where you're standing or where you're looking in relation to the elevation and indeed to the plan. So it's giving people information. And you would always put your section lines and drawings. It's very important. Now, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in the floor line. So that's the floor line. And I'm going over these in black just to give you a sense of how I built the drawing up or how I built the elevation up. The next thing I want to establish is you know, where my external and internal walls are. Okay, so I'm going to put in a line for the external one. You can see I can just pull it up there from the plan. Okay. And then I can pull it up there. And that's effectively my external one on that side. And same from this one. Now equally you can do this with a ruler. You don't have to do it by hand. So I'm just going to shade these in to be very clear about um, the fact that they are external walls. Here are my external walls. That's the structure of the wall. And this is the line of the internal wall. And this is the line of the internal wall. But at the moment, I don't know what my head height is. So we're just going to put it in at 2.4 metres. So if you have a look here, 1, 2, Point four of a meter. So ceiling height in this instance is 2.4 meters or 2400 millimeters. Now what we also need here is the thickness of the floor between the upper and lower areas. So I'm going to put that in at 0.2 of a meter or 200 millimeters. Okay, so that's about, if we look at our meter, that's about 200. Okay, so I'm just going to put it in like that. So what we've established here are the parameters in the elevation. So you have your floor, you have your ceiling height, and you have your external wall. So now we, we know what we're dealing with in terms of space. Now what we want to do is we want to have a look and see what the stairs is like in here. Now I'm not going to go into the measurements or the construction of the stairs because it's um, a little bit more complex um, than 
uh, I would have time to do in this lecture so just bear with me and I'll give you a rough idea of how, how I came by the sizes and so on. But simply, if I have a look at my stairs here, I have a clear landing space here. Okay, so I know that's where my first step starts. So I'm just gonna pull a line up here. So my first step starts about there, okay? And I am deciding that the height of my step is 200 and that the depth of the tread is 250 which basically means, I've measured this out here, which basically means that the final step where you step onto the top floor is here. So that's your top floor there. So I'm just going to shade this in as well. Okay, so I know that's my first step, that's my last step. So I'm literally just going to draw a line connecting them. And that's the slope of the stairs. Now it's very important to calculate the actual slope of the stairs because it's um, in uh, within you know certain uh, a range in the building regulations. But for the moment, again, we're not going to worry too much about that. So uh, let's just say you have some kind of a balustrade or handrail running up there. So I'm just going to roughly put that in. Okay, so our stairs is going to look something like that. Now, if we have a look at our couch here, what we want to do is. We can see the corner of the couch there, the other corner of the couch there. And what I want to do is pull a line up here like that and a line up here like that. So say the seat of our couch is about here, maybe about 0.4 of a metre. And then the back comes up to in and around a metre. I mean, couches vary in size, but this is, I suppose, uh, just some general measurements for your couch. We just want to have a look at it in terms of layout development. So this is how our couch, the side of our couch, so we're looking that way at our couch, so that's what we're seeing. And arguably we'll see the back of the couch there. So there's our couch back, and there's this particular seat that we're looking at. Now we're cutting through it, but I'm not even gonna bother putting in the, um, the workings or the construction of it. Okay, so that's how our couch relates to the stairs. We're big picture now, so I want to kind of see, will somebody be able to comfortably fit under there? And the answer is yes, they most likely will, because they're coming in this way. So here is roughly where they would go to maybe sit down on the couch, and you could argue that somebody's gonna be, look something like that when they're sitting down. Okay, so, Let's have a go at the upper layout now as well, or sorry, the upper elevation. So again, I'm going to pull up from my external walls. And put in my floor line. I'm just putting in my floor line there so there's a gap between the elevation and the plan. I mean, you could put it closer to the plan or further away from the plan, but this is the line. Once you define where that line is, the ceiling height is 2.4 from the floor to the ceiling. Okay, so let's have a look here. So 1, 2.4, so ceiling height there again. So I'm literally just going to put a line across there. Now I'm going to put in my external wall and so I have my external walls in my ceiling my floor line so I want to see how my windows are there so I'm going to say for argument's sake that this window is um, maybe like a door that opens so I'm just roughly going to put that in there so you pull your line literally up from your window from your window there now there's always a space here, a space of wall here, so that the window frame can fit in comfortably. Okay, so let's just, for argument's sake, say that's about 200. So I'm just going to put in a set of double doors there. Okay, now this will, the 200 will come right across over the second window as well. Now, and I'm going to pull that up from there. And I'm going to make this not uh, a full height window because the couch is there and there's enough light coming in from 
these two windows anyway, so I don't really need it. Now I'm going to pull my couch up. Okay, so you can see from this section line, this is where I'm looking, that I can see, say, the arm of my couch and the back of my couch, which is about a metre high, and then the other, the end of the couch, and the, the seat area of the couch. And I've planned there, so I'm just roughly going to put that in. And we're thinking of putting a partition there. Now I have it quite close there. So even in my elevation, I can see that it probably makes sense if the partition wall goes there, right in the middle. You know, if it's too close here, it looks kind of strange. So I'm going to put that there. And equally going to sort of amend that. And I might just put it over a little bit more because I've quite a lot of space there. Now, so you can see the kind of use of doing that. Okay. So now I've managed to pull up the elevation of this wall here and the elevation of the wall with the stairs. So I'm beginning to build a picture of what my interior space looks like. Now equally you can carry on and pull up this elevation here on this side. I don't know if you can quite see it but again say you put your floor line in and then one two point four meters up ceiling line and then you pull up your external walls, pull up your external walls, there, internal wall, internal wall, and then you have your window there. I don't think you can quite see that on the video, but and you can do the same for this. So you're always inside looking, facing each of these walls. But when you can see your plan in relation to your elevations, it makes your design more, um, more holistic. So it's a good exercise.